hands in this place, Father. We bless you, Lord. New beginnings. Would you stand to your feet? Hello, if you're watching online, we want to welcome you to New Beginnings. We encourage you to sing out praises with us. We're going to lift up the name of Jesus in this place. And wherever you are, we encourage you to sing along. We come alive to magnify the praises of our God. The rocks cry out if we don't shout. The praises of our God. There's nothing that can stand against the praises of our God. We will defeat the enemy with the praises of our God. Listen out. Oh, sing praise to our God. For his name is worthy, worthy. like 
bless you, Father. We bless you in this place, Father. We bless you, God. We bless you, Jesus. God, we bless you, God. God, we bless you, Father.
touch every heart that's watching right now. Father, I pray that your presence would just go right into every household, every home. Lord God, whether they're watching it right now in real time or Father, no matter when, an individual's watching this in the future, God, I pray the anointing of the Holy Ghost, the presence of the living God would flood every household, touch every heart right now in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, right now, in the season that we're in, Pastor Tom, where are you? Come over here. Right now, in the season that we're in, it's, it's almost nearly a day doesn't go by without us hearing a report of another person sick or another individual in the hospital or loved ones, family members, and extended family members, or co-workers. It's almost every day we're getting reports. But in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, this thing's going to stop. Amen. So, so what we desire to do, come here. What we desire to do, and I'm going to ask all the pastors here to, to come close. I want to read to you from Acts chapter 19. Those of you that are uh, members of our church, steady attendees, you you know that we adhere to a principle that we found in the New Testament. And it's, it's found in Acts chapter 19. And it tells us this in verse 11, speaking about the Apostle Paul. Now God worked unusual miracles by the hands of Paul. So that even handkerchiefs or aprons were brought from his body to the sick and the diseases left them and evil spirits went out of them. Okay? Now we, we, are, we are basing what we do on this Example here that's given to us in the Word of God, Acts chapter 19, for those of you that might be home, not familiar with it, Acts chapter 19, verse 11 and 12, okay? And uh, basically what we're doing is we're going to lay hands on these, on these cloths, these handkerchiefs. Now, there's nothing magical about these handkerchiefs. There's nothing going to be magic about them. We're just following this principle because the anointing of the Holy Spirit can rest upon things, okay? Amen. And uh, would you hold that for me, please? And uh, could you come closer? I keep telling you to come closer. Oh, I know you are. I was holding them for you. Sorry. <laughs> and so what we believe in God, that is, when he hands on these cloths, that the anointing of the Holy Spirit to be transferred 
from these cloths to those that are sick that can't come to church, those that are in the hospitals. I know sometimes if, there's, if you have someone, if you have a loved one in the hospital, and especially if it's a COVID situation, the virus situation, you can't get to them, but you may be able to. We're going to trust God that a doctor, a nurse, a cleaning person, somebody that you can get a hold of will get one of these cloths to that individual and either slip it in their pillow or do whatever, just get it to them. Because we're believing God that what he did through the Apostle Paul with handkerchiefs back then, he's going to do the same thing now. Because he's the God that does not change. He's the God that does not change. And, and Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Are you listening? Now, now, God has honored this step of faith many, many, many times here in this church with many, many individuals coming back with reports of healing. Uh, once these cloths have touched your body. Again, nothing magic is going to happen with this. There's nothing magic about these cloths. It's that we're trusting God. As we lay hands, this is a, a, a point of contact for the individuals that are believing God for healing, okay? So, so would you just stretch forth your hands here? Those of you that are watching online, just stretch forth your hands towards us here. Father, in the name Thank of the Lord, Lord Jesus Christ, we lay our hands upon these cloths, Father God. Come on, come on, come on. We lay our hands upon these cloths, Father, that in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, God, that you're going to honor our faith, faith in, in your anointing, faith in the word of God, faith that what you did through the Apostle Paul, you'll also do now. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, we declare that when these cloths touch the bodies of those that are oppressed, those that are diseased, those that are sick, those that have been injured, that would be the, just the same yeah. as if they were here in person and we were laying hands on them, that the anointing of the Holy Ghost would be transferred from these cloths into their bodies and they will instantly receive results. They will yeah. instantly begin yeah, to heal. Yeah, yeah. They will instantly see the anointing of the Holy Ghost changing things in their lives. We're trusting you for this, Father God. Thank you that by the stripes on Jesus' back that we're healed. That he himself bore upon himself all our sickness, all our pains, all our griefs, all of our sorrows. And by his stripes, we are healed. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. Praise God. Thank you. Thank you. Well, amen, church. God is good. Amen. Let's give God some praise one more time. Amen. He's faithful. You could be seated. He is faithful. He was our healer then, and he's the same yesterday, today, and forever, right? So he is always our healer. He took those stripes for us so we could be healed, so we could be whole. And welcome to church. If I've never had an opportunity to meet you before, my name is Matt. I'm our Bayville campus pastor here and New Beginnings Church. I want to welcome you here and welcome all of you on Church Online as well. Let's give it up for our Church Online family that are joining us this weekend. And if this is your first time here, go ahead and you'll see that red connect card in the seat back in front of you and just take about 30 seconds throughout the service just to fill that out. And we would love for the opportunity to connect with you after service at the first time guest area. You'll see it in the lobby by the red wall. We have a free gift waiting for you. And Church Online, just click that connect with us button because we truly believe here at New Beginnings, it's not just a place to attend, but it's a family to belong to. Amen? So go ahead and fill that card out. And also, maybe you've been coming here now for a little while, a couple uh, months, maybe a year. Maybe this is your first year. Maybe you came here for the first time last week and you're back this week and you're wondering what your next step is. And that would be next move. And next move takes place on the first and second weekend each and every month. So January is going on. It's finishing up this weekend in, Mar in February. Oh, my gosh. February's, I'm not going to skip February. February's going to be good, right? My wife heard that. She'd be like, you trying to skip Valentine's Day or something? No. Anyway, February classes are next month, first and second weekend. Make sure you get plugged in. If you want to know what your next step is, that's your next step. And you can become a member here. You can get hooked up on a volunteering team where we use our gifts and our talents to serve one another. Amen? So that would be your next step. And church, we're going to use this time now to give, to continue in a heart of worship and our giving. Amen? And I want to share this scripture with you. And it's in James chapter 1, verse 17. And, and I just want to read, James says, Whatever is good and perfect is a gift coming down to us from God our Father who created all the lights in the heavens. He never changes or casts a shifting shadow. You know, I think we would all call money a good thing, right? If you have money, you say that's a good thing. 
And you know, the thing is, is when it comes to God, is we might want to invite Him into every spiritual area area of our life, but when it comes to personal areas, especially finances, maybe not inviting Him into that. But if we believe money is a good thing, it comes from God. It's a good gift, and we have to look at it and change really our mindset and more so our hearts that it's not ours, and instead we are just stewards to what He has given us. And when we have that heart of believing we are stewards and being good stewards. When we give faithfully, following God's principles, we could know He is going to faithfully supply, supply all of our need. Amen? And I want to encourage you, maybe 2021 is a year for you to take that step to invite Him into the area of your finances. Trust Him. He is faithful. He is a good Father. Amen? He cares about that area in your life, very much so. And He wants to be there for you. He wants to be able to bless you. He wants to be able to work through you so you can bless others as well. Amen? So you can give by grabbing an offering envelope and giving that way, and the ushers will come down in, in just a few minutes, or you can give online always at newbeginningsnj.org slash give, or now you can give via text as well. And as you're preparing your offering, we do have a few announcements. We have our New Beginnings Co-op and Learning Center here, and we started that a couple months ago, and it's been going, um, it was going, it really is going amazing. We took a few weeks off with everything going with the holidays. It's on Thursdays, and they're going to be having an orientation this Thursday, and you just need to go to our website to sign up. It has all the info. You'll be able to go to the orientation, hear about the co-op and what it is, and decide, hey, maybe you want to get your kid plugged in, but this is really a need, especially with a lot of people doing homeschool now or hybrid, whatever it may be, and your kids aren't getting those social interactions and we want to really come alongside the parents and help you partner with you and helping you with your child especially in this area their education it's great they get to do crafts together they learn together it's an awesome time so make sure if you're interested this Thursday January 14th you can go right to the hub or right on our website to get all the info and to sign up for it amen and at the end of this month, we're going to have child dedications coming up. So if you have a child that you would like to dedicate to the Lord, Brick Campus and Bayville Campus will have child dedications at the 9 and 11 a.m. services on January 31st. And you, again, you could sign up for that right at the hub and right online as well. So make sure if that's you, you go ahead and sign up for that. So let's pray for our offering. Father, we just thank you that we have this opportunity to give. I thank you that you would bless our giving here tonight, Father. Father says every good and perfect thing comes from you, Father. So we thank you, Father. I thank you we could be good stewards of what you have given us, Lord. Again, I thank you. I just pray increase upon each and every household, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen and amen, church. Well, church, why don't you just draw your attention to the screens? I'm sitting there, and I wasn't thinking about it, but all of a sudden I heard this on the inside for 2020. You might want to write it down. We're going from pitiful to powerful, and our best is yet to come. When I say the word 2020, the images that come to your mind probably aren't great. It was a challenging year to say the least. Many of us had become educators at home, worked remotely, lost jobs, and lost loved ones. Plans were changed, vacations were canceled. All over the world, people had felt the enormous weight of that year. And as we walk out of 2020 and adjust our eyes to 2021, I think it would be good for us to pause, breathe, look back, and see the year through God's perspective. The Great Commission in Matthew 28 calls the church to go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, His Son Jesus, and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to obey everything God has commanded of us. And at the end of this calling, Jesus reminds us that He is with us always, even to the very end of the age. And despite everything we had gone through, New Beginnings Church, through your financial partnership, and through the sacrifice of your time volunteering, leaned into that calling in 2020 and will continue to in 2021 as a church family to press on towards that calling God has called us to. After we met for Easter online, as soon as the shutdown started, we moved New Beginnings Church online to continue worshiping with you each week and to evangelize the people online who may have never thought to step foot inside of our buildings. We had 10,354 unique web browsers join us at Church Online in 2020. 
That means each visit could have represented an entire family watching together. Pastor Joe challenged us to make Passover special in 2020 by making a favorite meal with our family and intentionally remembering Jesus together. We all met online and celebrated Passover together with Pastor Joe. We gathered together and worshiped Jesus outside at both of our campuses all summer long. We delivered 100 gift bags to our seniors who were isolated from others during the shutdown. We visited our local hospitals and prayed for nurses, doctors, and first line responders. We also had meals made and delivered to our nurses who were undoubtedly working overtime during the shutdown. We saw a need for parents who had to have school at home with their children during the shutdown and we launched our New Beginnings Co-op and Learning Center. We now have 18 students attending every week. During the summer, our New Kids team delivered 300 gift bags to every child that comes to New Kids. And at Christmas time, they delivered 130 gift bags to every family with kids in K through fifth who called New Beginnings home. 78 people made the decision to go through our next new classes and become members of New Beginnings Church. 300 volunteers followed their calling and use their gifts to make church happen every week and ultimately serve God's kingdom. 25 people decided to go public with their faith in Jesus through water baptism. Forty-eight people made the decision to accept Jesus as their Lord and Savior in our in-person and online services. Each person moved from death to life and their lives will never ever be the same. At our Christmas box of kindness drive through outreach, we gave 155 families boxes of Christmas dinner items and a turkey at our Brick and Bayville campuses. In 2020, through drive through and in-person, our Destiny Food Pantry team served 6,404 families with much needed groceries, paper supplies, diapers, and much more. You raised $8,300 on $3 weekend for Jersey Shore Rescue Mission. Jersey Shore Rescue Mission is an awesome organization that works to meet the physical, emotional, and spiritual needs of the homeless and displaced in Asbury. And finally, as we continue to endeavor to fulfill the Great Commission, we are launching our New Beginnings Wall Campus in Wall Township to reach all people for Jesus in central New Jersey. So as we look back at this year through God's perspective, we see what was all around us, pain, loss, confusion, anger, division, but we also see Jesus and his spirit standing in the middle of it all, moving and doing what only he can do. Through his church, lives were changed forever. Those in need were helped. His church grew stronger in adversity instead of falling away. Thank you for being the church with us in 2020. Now we look ahead to 2021 and step into the future God has for us. And we know that the best is yet to come. Come on. Hallelujah, we bless you God. Father, we thank you and we bless you. We're so honored, Lord God, that you've given us the privilege of being able to partner with you, co-laboring together with you, God, to see your will be done, to see your glory, Father God, cover this land. And it's only the very beginning. It's only the very beginning. We thank you, God, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ for your blessing upon every household, every person that calls new beginnings their home, every person, Father God, that in, with, uh, in all of central New Jersey, North Jersey, South Jersey, every individual that calls Jesus their Lord, God, thank you for your blessing and your hand upon every household. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we look forward to all that you have in store for us. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen. amen, amen. Go ahead, be seated. Now, the prayer cloths that we prayed over before just a few minutes ago, 
Those of you that have family members or friends that are in need and you desire to have one of those, please come forward at the end of the service. Those of you that are online, if you desire to receive one of these, please either contact us right now as you're watching, just on that little chat there, just say that you need a cloth, give us some way to contact you, uh, reach out to us on Facebook or send us an email, a text message, uh, carrier pigeon, anything. Just uh, you, you get over to us and get, find, let us know that you want a cloth and we'll make arrangements for you. Amen? Amen. Amen? Amen. Well, for those of you that weren't here last weekend, Happy New Year to each and every one of you. Those of you that are online, if you weren't with us last weekend, we wish you a Happy New Year. Now, uh, this weekend, we're, we're again uh, going to talk about the vision for 2021. Um, I'm going to follow up what we started last weekend. Last weekend, we focused and concentrated more on the spiritual aspect of what we believe God has called us to in this coming year. Uh, but this weekend, I'm going to add, in fact, I'm going to jump in there in just a few minutes. We're going to talk about some of the natural things, some of the, some of the projects that the Lord has put on our heart, some of the things that we'll be beginning, some of the things that we'll be launching. So the key verse of scripture that we started out with last week was in Isaiah chapter 46, starting in verse 9. Remember the former things of old, for I am God and there is no other. I am God and there is none like me, declaring the end from the beginning and from ancient times the things that are not yet done, saying, my counsel shall stand and I will do all my pleasure. And we found out last week, we, we emphasized the fact that because God knows everything that's going to happen, he knows how things are going to turn out even before it starts, that gives us the confidence and gives us the faith to march into 2021, uh, amen, with confidence, with full assurance that God is with us, amen? amen. And if God is with us, who can be against us? Can be against us? Who, who cares? Right. Amen? amen? So... Um, Again, we talked about the spiritual part of the vision last week, and I'm going to review a little bit of that. Uh, we can already see, uh, just in this first week of 2021, that we're going to have to live in a, a life that's completely dependent upon God. Amen. How, how many, how, unless you were sleeping all week, how many of you realize this is going to be a year that we're going to have to be dependent upon the, our Lord and Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. We're going to have to live in dependency upon the Word. We're going to, listen, listen, we're going to have to hear the voice of the Holy Spirit clearer than ever. Amen. We're going to have to receive direction from Him and assurance from Him. And in His grace, we will overcome. Amen? Amen. So, the key word was dependence. Dependence upon God. And so this week, I'm taking the opportunity to announce, again, some of the more practical things that we'll be accomplishing in 2021. As uh, Bianca mentioned in the video that we just saw that recap, um, our newest campus, Wall, New Beginnings Wall Township, will open to the public on February the 7th, amen, just a few weeks from now. Uh, that campus, if you're not familiar with it, is located at 1615 Glendola Road in Wall Township. If you're familiar with that area, um, it's, it's not far off of Route 138. Um, it's very close to Belmar Boulevard. In fact, you could see Belmar Boulevard from the front of the property. And so uh, we, find, we closed on that property in, in November of 2019. But we started negotiating on that property in May of 2018. That was a really supernatural uh, event that took place because we were still, you know, just getting the Babel campus up and running. And all of a sudden, bam, uh, this new opportunity presented itself. And it wasn't like we we're looking for it. Just came and followed us, you know. Amen. Almost sounds like that Deuteronomy 28. These blessings shall follow you and overtake you. And, and so we started negotiating in May of 2018. And we finally closed on the property in November of 2019, uh, a year and a few months, I guess a year and four months later, five months later. And we were supposed to have it completed and opened on this past Easter Sunday of last year. But, you know, with all the shutdowns and, and our inability to obtain building permits because it needed some extensive renovations, uh, we had to delay everything until now. And so our campus pastors, uh, Pastor, Pastor Rick and Jen Cardwell, uh, will be leading our launch team to do our part alongside all the other churches in Monmouth County uh, to impact Monmouth County for the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. 
And they will be preaching and teaching and healing, just like Jesus' ministry. Amen? And so Sunday mornings at 10 a.m., we'll, we'll be there. I'll have live worship, live teaching. Uh, those of you that have family members in that area, friends, coworkers, make sure you tell them. Bring their kids. There's a, a beautiful, completely renovated, completely redecorated and furnished children's department there. Um, please tell all of your, your, your friends there. Now, those that are part of the launch team already, you already know that you're going there to uh, Walt Township. You're going to be, you know, our, our, our send-off team there to go and, and start that work. Uh, the Cardwells will be in touch with you, each one of you personally, uh, to let you know what's going on because you'll be meeting a few weeks ahead of time. Um, if you'd like to be part of that team, you can also see the Cardwells after service. They're here, or you can reach out to them. Uh, by calling the office. Amen? Amen. So, New Beginnings Wall Township, here we go. Yeah. Glory to God. Also, in this coming year, actually probably starting about three months from now, um, this building here is going to go uh, under some renovations. We're going to uh, build some new offices for our staff. Right now, we've, in some offices, we've got three or four people in the same office. So we'll be building some new offices for the staff and also new classrooms for our kids. And uh, probably by the end of the summer, uh, the outside of the building will have a completely different look to it. And we believe, God, it's going to be a highlight in this area of Bricktown. Amen? Amen. Praise God. Number three, in 2021, we will formulate a plan uh, to start taking some action in 2022 to increase our capacity at our Bayville campus. Our Bayville campus under the leadership of Pastor Matt and Bianca Huber, together with Pastor Mike and Cindy Viola, they've been seeing lots of new families coming out, even in the midst of the pandemic. And so we'll be creating a plan for a newer expanded sanctuary space and also some new classrooms for adult classes. They have a beautiful children's wing there, but we need some adult classes. And, and with having 11 acres of property there, we've got plenty of room to expand. Amen? Amen. So pray for us that we'd have wisdom and understanding from God about how to proceed in favor with everyone that's involved. And uh, of course, we trust God for the resources to do these things. Another exciting thing, which I, I've really been very, very much anticipating being able to announce, uh, the fourth thing that we will be not, and it's not in order of priorities, but just in order of giving you the information. In 2021, actually in, in the spring, we will be launching New Beginnings Bible School, okay? For those who really want to go deeper in the Word of God, especially for those who believe that they're called to leadership and to ministry, uh, it'll be two classes per week at night. It'll be starting in late winter, early spring. Some of the subjects will be the in-depth teaching on the Holy Spirit, uh, the book of Acts. There'll be an in-depth in study on the subject of faith, the subject of righteousness, et cetera. There's a whole bunch of classes that we'll be offering for this first year. Amen. Will we have more information to follow? So these are the things that we know in the natural we'll be accomplishing. And obviously, anything else that God puts on our heart throughout the year. Uh, as we follow the leading of the Holy Spirit. So, so listen, please pray. Those of you that are watching at home or watching on YouTube, please, uh, please pray for us. Please pray because in the position that we're in, we always need wisdom. We need wisdom. We need understanding. We need open doors of favor and, and things of this nature. So we're counting on you to pray. Amen. Pray that according to that prayer in Ephesians chapter 1, that God would continuously grant unto us the spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of God. The eyes of our understanding being enlightened, that we would know what the hope of his calling is. Amen? Amen. Amen. So, here we are. Let me talk a little bit about what we talked about last week, because some of you could be saying, wow, that's a lot to accomplish in one year. How are we going to accomplish this? Well, we're going to accomplish it by walking in the word of the Lord that was given unto this church that we announced last week, and that is walking in dependence on God. In 2021, God is requiring every Christian to be totally dependent upon him. What does dependence mean? What do we mean by dependence? Well, it's the state of relying on or, or needing someone or something for aid, support, or the like. To display complete reliance upon, confidence, trust in another other than self. What does it mean to be dependent on God? If you, if you weren't here, uh, if you weren't able to hear, be here last weekend, or if you were not able to follow us online, then please go to our website, go to the archive, please listen to the entire message. I, don't, I cannot go to the, through the entire message from last week. We're just going to hit some high points. 
and then I'm going to share some other things with you. Okay, it's, it's the fact that we make a declaration that I'm not going to live my life relying on myself anymore. Amen. I'm going to rely on him. I'm going to declare that dependence. I'm going to walk out that dependence. I'm going to practice that dependence on him. Amen? And I, and I have a strange feeling that 2021 is going to give us a lot of opportunities to live totally dependent on him. Amen? It's, if, if this week is any indication of that, yeah, we're going to have plenty of opportunities to trust in the Lord. Amen? Amen. Our key verse of Scripture, Proverbs chapter 3, starting at verse 5. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding, but in all your ways acknowledge him, and he's going to do what? He shall direct your paths. Do not be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord, depart from evil, and it will be health to your flesh and strength to your bones. You see, God always has a reward for the things that he asks us to do, for the areas that he calls us to be obedient there is always a reward. There's, a, there's an incentive. He's created us that way. Some people walk through life and foolishly say, I don't want anything from God. Well, what, what about salvation? I don't want God to have to do anything for me. Yeah, until you can't pay your mortgage. Or until the doctor tells you, hey, uh, you know, we've seen a bad report here. Uh, then everybody's looking for God. God created us to be dependent on him. It's not a shame for us to be dependent on him. It is not a weakness for us to be dependent on him. In fact, you find yourself very weak when you try to depend on yourself. Why? Because you are a limited individual. You have limited, you have potential, but it is limited potential. Amen? Amen. Amen. So, dependence is either totally relying on God 100% or not at all. Partial dependence is still independence. I want to read to you from the Amplified Classic Version, Proverbs 3, 5. Lean on, trust in, and be confident in the Lord with all your heart and mind. Do not rely on your own insight or understanding. The message translation, Proverbs 3. Rely on, trust in, and have confidence in God before anything else or anyone else. What does it mean? What does it mean? It means don't trust in your own abilities. What works last time may not work this time. You notice that? Sometimes we want to go into default. We, we have a, a situation that comes up. We think, okay, what did I do the last time? Well, I went, I repeated this scripture, and I, I repeated that scripture, and then all of a sudden you realize you're saying these things, and they're falling flat. Why? Because maybe God wants, wants to reveal himself to you in a different way. And you're not giving him the opportunity because you want to go back to the way it happened the last time. So it's, it's, it's not trusting in your own abilities. It's, it's not automatically assuming that God's going to do the same thing over and over and over again the same way. Amen? Amen. Stop. Oh, this is a good one. Stop being a know-it-all. Mm -hmm. Rely on the Holy Spirit to teach you, to direct you, and to remind you of everything that the Lord, through the Word, has taught you. Involve him in every area of your life, your health, your emotions, your finances, and your future. Your finances and your future. Okay? Uh, God knows that we live in this world. Now, we're not of this world, but we live in the world. And he knows that in this world, we live in a system. That we don't trade chickens for, for, for vegetables. We, we, we have cash. We have money. Okay, we have, we have something that, that has value attached to it that we exchange for services or for goods or for a house to live in or for electricity so you have lights. He understands this. It's not, money is not evil. It's what you do with money that determines whether it's evil or not. Right. Are you listening? It's what you do with it. It's your attitude about it. Okay, and money makes a very poor God. It makes good, it's good for doing things and getting things done and for blessing people and for, leaving bur for relieving the burdens on people's life. But it makes a horrible God. Yeah. Amen? Amen? So don't worship it. Use it. Don't worship it. So again, last week we talked about what does dependence on God look like? And we went to uh, one of my favorite portions of Scripture in the Old Testament, in 2 Chronicles chapter 20. I just love this story. I just love it. I, I just put myself in it. I don't know about you. I throw myself in it. When I'm reading the Scriptures, I throw myself on the scene. I'm there. I'm experiencing it. I'm smelling it. I'm seeing it. I'm, I'm feeling the atmosphere. That's how you get. And so every time I read 2 Chronicles chapter 20, I think to myself, okay, what would I do if I was Jehoshaphat? 
what would I do? If, I, if somebody came and told me, hey, there is a multitude of armies that are coming against you and they're heading right for where you are right now. And the Bible tells us in verse two, that some came and told Jehoshaphat saying, a great multitude is coming against you from beyond the sea, from Syria, and they are in whatever that place is. And verse three said, Jehoshaphat did what? Feared. Feared. What would you do? Feared. Feared. But he didn't stay in the fear. Are you catching this? He feared because he recognized the seriousness of the situation. He recognized the gravity of the situation. He didn't sit there like a dummy and go, well, I don't know if I can believe. I don't know if I believe this. I don't know if it's true. No, they said, hey, listen, they're coming. They're heading right here. He realized the danger that he was in and the danger that his people were in. And so the very greatest thing that he could do as a leader was not to stay in that in that. In that that moment of panic, not to allow the fear to paralyze him, but allow the fear to do what? Drive him to God. Most people don't even have enough sense to do that, okay? So it says he set himself to seek the Lord and proclaimed a fast throughout all of Judah. And so Judah gathered together to ask help from the Lord. And from all the cities of Judah, they came to seek the Lord. Then Jehoshaphat did the next best thing you could do, the next action step. He stood in the assembly of Judah and Jerusalem in the house of the Lord before the new court. He got where the temple was. He knew this is the best place for all the people to assemble themselves. And then he began to pray. What's he doing? He set himself to seek the Lord. What's he doing? Through this prayer, you're going to see that he declares his dependence upon God. And what you're going to need to do when you find yourself in a situation where fear is trying to grip you, when you find yourself in a situation where it's like armies are coming at you, that you're going to have to make a declaration of dependence upon God in order to activate the power of God in your life. Are you listening? So then Jehoshaphat stood in the assembly of Judah and Jerusalem, and then verse 4, verse 6 says, And he began to say, O Lord God of our fathers, are you not God in heaven? And do you not rule over all the kingdoms of the nations? And in your hand is there not power and might so that no one is able to stand to withstand you? Are you not our God who drove out the inhabitants of this land before your people Israel and gave it to the descendants of Abraham, your friend forever? What's he doing? He's presenting this argument to God. He's not arguing with God. He's doing very much like an attorney would do. He's presenting his case to the Lord. Some of us think it's a, you know, I don't want to bother God. He's too busy. He can handle it. Turn to somebody and say, he can handle it. So, So go and make your case to the Lord. Go and tell him, look, I'm concerned about this. I've got situations in my life that seem like they're out of control. I got, you know, I got, uh, I got more bills than I have money. I got more going out than I have coming in. I've got a pain over here, an ache over here. You can tell him. Yes. Are you listening? Yes. You can tell him. So long story short, he makes this plea before the Lord. He lays the whole case out. And then the most important part of this portion of scripture is found in verse 12. He, he ends up this prayer with this classic Statement, O oh, our God, will you not judge them? For we have no power against this great multitude that is coming against us, nor do we know what to do. Look at this. Can you say this together with me? One, two, three. But our eyes are upon you. What's he saying? Our dependence is upon you. You and I are going to have to make that declaration for this new year. We have no power. We don't know what's coming. And the power that we do have is only because of the Holy Spirit that's within us. Apart from him, we, we get overwhelmed. And this is the, let's just start out this way. Let's not wait until we get to March and find out, oh my God, this is worse than 2020. Yeah. Let's not wait till then. Let's start out now. Making that declaration. Whatever comes, Lord. Whatever craziness presents itself. Whatever turmoil. Our eyes are upon you. Amen? Amen? Say that with me. Our eyes are upon you. Best place we can be. We, we can learn so much from this king's example. Now, let me ask you this question. When, when our back is up against the wall, what are we going to do? 
Are we going to fall to pieces? Are we going to just, are we just going to, no, we're going to, we're going to follow what the word says. Well, we, are we going to wring our hands and say, how are we going to launch this new campus in the middle of the most chaotic season in the history of mankind? No, no of course not. Why? Because our eyes are upon him. Are we going to put everything on hold? Are we going to be paralyzed with this wait and see attitude? No. no. We're going to march forward. Why? Because number one, we're not going on our own strength. We go in his strength. Amen. Our eyes are not on the circumstances. Our eyes are on Amen. him. Amen? Amen? We came out of 2020. This church, this ministry came out of 2020 in such a way. Just... If somebody would have said, do you believe that 2020 is going to be a year of prosperity? I would have went, mm, the way it's starting out here, I don't know. But you know what? You just keep putting one foot in the other, in front of the other. You just keep your eyes on God. You keep following what he tells you to do. When doors open, you walk through them. Amen? And we found out that we said, oh my God, how is it possible that we had such a successful year in this ministry? Fed 6,000, oh, 6,400 families, not 6,400 people, 6,400 cars came through here to pick up food. That's crazy. That's more people than we were feeding even after the hurricane hit in 2012. Who would have ever imagined that we'd have so much opportunity? Who would have ever imagined? Yeah, but if we would have got that attitude, oh, we just got to sit and let's just sit in our hands. Let's just not do anything, you know, because you never know what's going to happen. Well, you never know what's going to happen, and you never know how God's going to come through for you. Wild ride. That's what it's been like. Are we, will we stop dreaming and planning? on reaching Central Ocean County, Central New Jersey, reaching Monmouth County? No, of course not. Well, you know, everything is so uncertain. Yeah, it is. And it can go either way. We believe God is going God's way. No, we're going to do what King Jehoshaphat did. We're going to do exactly what Proverbs chapter 3 instructs us to do. He didn't try to figure it out himself. I'm not trying to figure it out myself. He didn't try to plan a strategy of his own. I'm not trying to plan a strategy of mine. Now, we use wisdom. We follow the lead of the Holy Ghost, okay? But when difficulty comes, we don't throw in the towel and say that's the end of it. You listening? He gathered the people and led by example, and that's what our leadership team has, has ventured to do. These past 23 years, it's worked. We're not gonna change it now. We're just gonna keep following Jesus, Amen. I hope you're with us because you see when you follow you get to enjoy everything that goes on in that journey he, Jehoshaphat humbled himself before the Lord and declared his dependence on God for all to see and to hear and so again just to review a few of the things from last week dependence upon God allows us to do things we need to do even if we're afraid man I want to spend a minute there Dependence upon God allows us to do the things that we're afraid to do in the natural. It's very easy right now to sit back and say, well, you know, uh, this just isn't time for any kind of a new venture. No, this is a time for new ventures. Amen. Who would have believed, when I, when I received these figures this past week or two weeks ago, that because we were forced to go online and not have in-person services, we saw 10,000 new individuals hit our website, hit our YouTube channel, watching our videos, watching the services online. We would have never seen 10,000 people. What, in this place? You put all three campuses together in that time period. There's no way we could have seen 10,000 people, minister to 10,000 people, unless we had like 12 services a day. Are you realizing the magnitude of what that is? Now imagine every one of those 10,000 households. And you don't know if there's three or four people sitting in front of the screen at the same time. Because it's only one person logging on, right? We don't know now how those lives have been affected. We don't know now who else was in their sphere of influence that they said, hey, I just heard this teaching online or I just found out about this church. I just found, I'm just hearing about Jesus. I didn't know this about Jesus. I didn't know this about the word of God. 
what that could have set off in somebody's life. But if we would have sat there and went, it's not time. It's not time to do anything new. It's not time for us to invest in the equipment that we needed to do this. No, we need to hold on to every penny that we have. What an opportunity would have missed. I hope you're grasping this. Especially those of you that are watching this online. We're talking about you. You know, Jesus spent much of his time training his disciples just to live exactly how we're talking about right now. He spent most of his time training his disciples to live a life of dependence on him. To human nature, dependence is a weakness. We have this tendency to, to, to just look down at people that live a life of, de- especially dependence on God. But dear Lord Almighty, that's the key to tapping into the power of God. That's the, te- that's the key to t- tapping into the nature of God. And we're told to be imitators of God like dear children. Well, you can't be an imitator of God if you want to live your life totally independent from him. Like you don't need him. Like you just go, 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 go in that room there and the next time I have a crisis, I'll give you a call. And we'll never admit that, but sometimes we live that way. I got it from here, God. You, you know, the beginning of last week, I got hit with something. I don't know what it is. Like, to this day, I don't know what it was. But all I said to my wife was, what I'm experiencing right now physically has taken me back about 40 years because it was, a, it was like a classic hangover. Just out of nowhere, just as just complete i haven't felt anything like that in 40 years and thank god i don't intend on experiencing that again you know but it brought me back to this place of dependence on god i'm like lord i can't stay like this i got stuff to do i got things to take care of just complete dependence upon the lord okay now if i'm moved by the feelings you want to throw in the towel if you move by the feelings, you're like, oh man, what's going on here? Maybe I got this and maybe I got that. You know, you start the whole list. Maybe I got the other thing, you know? But it brought me back to this place of complete dependence on God. Brought me back to this place of like, man, I can't stay in this. I got to snap out of this thing. And thank God after a day or so, it lifted. But I, I, I kind of felt like, um, you know... Father, you've taken me out of stuff like this in the past. It brought me back to those days of making deals with God. You know, you came home at three o'clock in the morning. You're, 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 you know, you're, you're, I don't want to get gross here, but you're spending time in front of that porcelain throne. Okay. And you're making deals with God. Making, how how many know what I'm talking about? Oh, oh, if, 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 if you just get me through this time. If you just get me through this, I promise you, I'll never do that again. And next week, what are you doing? Same thing again. So, so Jesus is trying to train the disciples to break some patterns, to break some, some, some ruts, to break some routines that were detrimental to life. And he's teaching them to be dependent upon him. He is the source of power. Amen? Amen. 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 So here we are, Matthew chapter 6. Verse 25, Jesus speaking. Again, he's training his disciples. Therefore, I say to you, do not worry about your life. Very familiar portion of scripture, I know it is. Just don't don't disconnect because, oh, I know the scripture. No, you you never read it in this context before. You never read it in the very beginning of 2021 before. Okay, so put it in that context and believe me, it's gonna be brand new. Therefore, I say to you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or what you would drink, nor about your body, what you will put on. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothing? Look at the birds of the air, for they neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns, yet your heavenly Father feeds them. He does what? Feeds them. And are you not more valuable than they are? Yes, we are. Verse 27, which of you by worrying can add one cubit to his stature? Verse 28, now, I prayed that one out a bunch of times. Verse 28, so do not worry about clothing. Consider the lilies of the field, how they, how they, they, how, forgive me. I'm, I'm trying to rush through this. Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin. In other words, they're not, they're not out there with six part-time jobs trying to, to make things happen. 
okay? And yet I say to you that not even Solomon in all of his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Now if God so clothes the grass of the field, which today is and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will he not much more clothe you? Oh, you of what? Little faith. She's saying when you become obsessed with these things, when you become obsessed with worry, when you become obsessed with what if I can't pay my mortgage? What if I can't pay my car payment? What if I can't? He says, you have little faith. Why? Because if he's take care of a bird and if he'll take care of a flower, is he not going to take care of you? He didn't send Jesus to the earth to die and shed his blood for a little bird or for a little flower. He sent Jesus to the earth to shed his blood for you and for me. Now, if God clothes the the grass of the field, which today is and tomorrow is thrown in the oven, will he not much more clothe you, O you a little faith? Verse 31. Therefore, do not worry, saying, what shall we eat? What shall we drink or what shall we wear? For after all these things the Gentiles seek, for your heavenly Father knows that you have need of these things. He knows what you need. Amen. He knows. And he never puts us in a position where we have to come begging. Verse 34, therefore do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about its own things. Sufficient for the day is its own trouble. What was his answer to this? But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added to you. He said, therefore, do not worry. Therefore, do not worry. Why? Because put your faith in verse 33 and verse 34 will come very easy. But you see, if you're going to be obsessed constantly, what what if, and 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 what if? Well, turn that around a little bit. Amen. What if God comes through? What if God provides? What if God is there for you? What if God's going to protect you? What if God's going to heal you? Flip it around. When the devil comes with his what ifs, go, oh, you're right. You know what? What if God comes through? Amen. Then I'm not going to worry. I'm not going to. Why? Because God will come through. He hasn't failed yet. So, so there, Jesus is using a very natural illustration to demonstrate a spiritual truth. Look it. All nature depends on God. Do you think about that? All nature depends on God. It is no shame for a robin to trust God for water, for seeds, and for worms. A sunflower doesn't rebel against God. It submits to God, and it follows the sun, and it draws its nutrients from it. And it, and it just demonstrates its beauty of what it's like to be dependent upon your creator. You realize Adam and Eve had no problem living completely dependent upon God before sin showed up? He created a garden and filled it with everything that man was going to need. Everything. Not just to, to survive, but to thrive. Bible teacher Andrew Womack, I was listening to one of his teachings recently, and he made this point. God didn't wait for Adam to say, I'm hungry, before God created food. God provided everything his man would need before he created man. Genesis chapter 1 and Genesis chapter 2 gives us the whole layout. God created everything that exists before he created man. Do not think that he anticipated everything that man was going to need. Of course he did. If he did that for Adam, he'll do that for you. I hope you're getting this. The plans that God has for new beginnings, church, were not an afterthought to God. The plans that he has for you, you are not an afterthought to God. He knows exactly what you're going to need. He knows exactly what you require to fulfill the plan that he has for your life. If we'll follow Proverbs chapter 3, if we'll acknowledge him in all of our ways, he will continue to direct our path. Now listen to me closely. I'm speaking to those that are here. I'm speaking to those that are watching right now. We declare that God knows everything that you and I need. And it's true. And he provides for all those needs. Now let me ask you this question. We're told again in Proverbs chapter 3, acknowledge him in all our ways and he'll make a path for you. So, what's the Spirit of God saying to us? 
If you'll cast all your concerns, your worries, and your stress on God, all will be cared for. And you can proceed in your life with shalom, with peace, with wholeness. I really want you to give me your attention as we wrap this up. Lately, there are so many people that are coming face to face with thoughts of eternity. We're daily reminded of the frailty of life. Constant reports of family members or friends who have departed this life through sickness and disease. The fear of death plagues mankind like a predator. And we're all very much aware of our own mortality. So in the same manner, if we will acknowledge God in all this, then we find out that he has already directed our path to heaven. If we, not, if we won't be wise in our own eyes, if we will abandon our self-righteousness and admit that we are sinners in need of a Savior, we will find our way. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father without me. That is an indisputable, timeless truth. It stands for all of eternity. Proverbs 3 says, if we'll acknowledge him in all of our ways, he'll direct our path. If we will acknowledge him as God, if we will acknowledge him as Savior, if we will acknowledge the Lord Jesus Christ as the one, the Lamb of God, who took away the sins of this world, if we will acknowledge him in those things, then God will direct our path and you find salvation. But he needs to be acknowledged. He needs to be submitted to. He needs to be declared as the only way to receive eternal life. Those of you that are here, if you've never done that, those of you that are online, if you've never done that, I want to invite you right now to repeat a very simple declaration of faith in the Lord Jesus Christ along with me. Would you do that, please? Those of you that are online, please, please acknowledge your dependence on God for your salvation. Acknowledge your dependence upon God in order to receive everlasting life. Say this with me. Father, I believe that Jesus, he is the Son of God, he is the sacrifice that you received for my sin. He paid for my sin when he died on the cross in my place. You, Father, received his blood as payment for me. I believe with all my heart that Jesus has been raised from the dead and he is alive right now. Therefore, I ask you, Jesus, be my Lord, be my Savior. Come into my heart. Fill me with your spirit. Thank you for making me a child of God. I'm so blessed to be your child. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, 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 amen. If you said that prayer tonight for the first time, those of you that are online, please, please let us know right there in that little chat space. Let us know that you prayed. You click that button. It's the first time that you prayed this prayer. Those of you that are here, if you prayed that prayer tonight for the first time, please, please, before you leave, come up to the front. Allow us to give you a Bible. Allow us to pray with you. Allow us, acknowledge the fact that you prayed that prayer and watch him direct your path from this point forward. Amen? Amen. Amen. God bless you. I pray blessing upon every single one of you, everyone that are watching from home. We're going to end the service tonight with worshiping again. Amen? Amen. Amen. God bless you. Amen, amen. Would you stand to your feet and join us as we're going to sing out?
sings my soul. Then sings my church give God some praise tonight he's so worthy of our praise thank you so much for worshiping with us may you all be blessed have a good night you are dismissed